Sing something crazy off the hook, man. Getting all wild. Can't help you doing an axe kick like David Lee Roth, man, while he's singing jump. Yeah. Jump for Jesus. <laughs> Back in the day, yeah, I know you're saying that's okay, it's good for you, man. Back in the day, does anybody remember the striper? You older yeah. say folks, you remember striper, man? Yeah, yeah. yeah but it was on your playlist. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Damn it, the long hair, man. She was grooving out. No, striper was a rock a christian rock band and of course their verse was by the stripes we are so they they made their you know they had like uh they looked like yellow jackets they had yellow and black banded spandex i'm like they look no different seriously they look no different than Motley Crue or any of those fools back in the day, they look no different. Mm -hmm. And they're on there singing for Jesus and one of their album covers, the guy's like, and he's got all, you know, the, I'm like, what's the difference between that? Oh, we threw Jesus yeah, in it, yeah, so it's yeah, different. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. that's kind of weird. Yeah, Striper was one of them. There's a few other ones. Uh, Pat, uh, I think Petra is another, another one. Oh, I like that stuff. I'm like, just go home and crank up some Death Leopard, man, until you go <laughs> that's down. Not good. You know, well, what's the difference, man? It's, just, it's weird stuff, but I don't know. Christian Rock, one of those jumbo shrimp, mm -hmm. you know, metal wood type of things, man. Verse 15. Okay, stop talking. Read the Bible. Verse 15. Some indeed preach Christ, even of envy and strife, but some also of goodwill. One preached Christ of contention, not sincerely, supposed to add affliction to my bonds, but the other of love, knowing that I am set to the defense of the gospel. What then? Notwithstanding every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is preached, and I dare and I dare and do rejoice. Yea, it will 
rejoice. Thank you, Father, again for the night, opportunity to look in your book. Father, I thank you again that it is your book, and uh, my thoughts and my ways have nothing to do with your thoughts and your ways unless they're aligned with the Bible. And I thank you for that. I pray that you use me tonight to bring honor and glory to yourself. Minister your word is, uh, you can only minister through me, that I may be a, a vessel meet for the master's use. And Father, you might get honor and glory to yourself through it. Thank you for saving our souls from hell, Father. Thank you for applying the blood to our souls. Thank you for washing us, sanctifying us, glorifying us, justifying us through the blood of your son, Jesus Christ. It's a debt I can never personally pay back, but I'd, I'd like to try, Father. I thank you and praise you for how good you've been in Christ's name. Amen. Speaking of help me, I saw it sure it was pretty neat because I'm, I'm a sharing kind of guy, uh, even though it's communistic. Uh, <laughs> you just give it. So I'll just give you something. So Tuesday night, we were, uh, uh, James and I were in uh, discipleship. Uh, other people had other things going on. But anyway, we had, so we had, we had, we had, disciple, we had discipleship going on. Uh, altar's open right now. <laughs> but uh, James and I were having a good time. And he, go, he goes, I never understood. You read that verse in Genesis about help me, help me, help me, help me. And I goes, I, he, he says, he goes, I, I, I know it doesn't mean help me because there should be a hyphen there. And he goes, I know it's helped me the way you read it, but it just wasn't registered to me until I read 2 Timothy chapter number 2, a vessel meet for them. And he goes, that's when the light went on for me. I'm like, <laughs> wow. God did that. Yeah. Man. Only the Spirit of God can bring that illumination to you, like the candlestick in the tabernacle in the holy place. Mm -hmm. You got the bread on one side, and you got the, the candlestick on the other side, and you've got the altar of incense in front of you. So what happens? You have prayer, the Word of God, but the Holy Ghost has to be instrumental in all those things. Your prayer life and the Word of God life, yeah. and he it's, he goes. It didn't make any sense to me the way you guys were reading it. Help me, help me. And he goes. I, and then he goes. I was reading Second Timothy, and he goes. Awesome. The light went on. I said, "Isn't it great when it just, yes. you know?" And then he goes, "Yeah." <laughs> <laughs> he and Jonathan are leading the cheerleading squad for our church. Man. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? I'm just gonna shake his head. That's it. <laughs> that's awesome, man. <laughs> but that's all right, man. That's just part of the personality, man. That uh, God did not give you something. It's okay, man. Uh, 15 through 18. I'd, I'd like to say this, man. I, I try to break this chapter down best I can. I know it's been taking a little bit of time, but that's okay. 15 through 18. I'd like to say this. It's not about you. It's about Him. Mm -hmm. What did the Apostle Paul just say right there? He goes, some preach Christ of contention, mm -hmm. not sincerely. Yeah. Other preach Christ of, of love, and man, they really mean it, and they're up there, and they really love their Savior, and you can tell the yeah. passion and boldness they have is from Almighty God. And you know what? Honestly, I just love Jesus Christ so much, I'm just glad his name is preached. Yeah. Well, that's hard, man. Because haven't you ever gotten a track, if you're out witnessing, so you get a track from like, let's say it's a Pentecostal church or whatever, what's the first thing you typically do with it? Mm -hmm. You know, you want to check it there. And instead of saying, you know what, I'm just glad somebody else out here is representing Jesus Christ. I'm not talking about the false cults, you know, JW, I'm not wishing them Godspeed, they're not coming to my house, yeah. and the morons, that ain't happening, that's not, 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 not what we're talking about. I'm talking about other saved brethren. Or out witnessing for Jesus Christ. And they might have an NIV, but they don't know any better. Yeah. But can I personally, as Dave Brown, rejoice that Jesus Christ is preached? Or do, do I have to have him preached my way, the way I like it? Now, we all gravitate towards a certain way of preaching. I, I, you've heard me say it a, a, a gajillion times, man. I like it 96 on the outside, man. Two-seamer in... Mike Cameron, leave your helmet at the plate, and Clemens goes. I, that's why I like. I like it. I like it, man. Right hard as it can be, right down the pipe, man. That doesn't necessarily mean it has to have a volume to it, but I prefer volume. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you could tell that or not. I prefer volume. Mm -hmm. I like somebody to get something that has some. They're rambunctious about. It. They're 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 into it, man. And there's something about a loud voice of God's behind it. Jesus cried with a loud voice on the cross. He cried in the last day of the feast in the temple in John 7. There's something about that loud voice that can be ascribed to the Holy Ghost. But uh, if somebody gets up and doesn't have that preaching that I like, i got to at least give them the opportunity 
for the Lord to use them in my life. Because sometimes you hear something you're like, oh, oh man. I, okay, so this is just real life, man. So the preacher gets up years ago, and this is, man, this is a, wow, this is a long time. This is early 90s. I think we were going when the old building in Plainville. And a, a missionary got up there, and he, and he preached John 3.16. Now, okay, for some of you going, man, that's kind of like, is that like kid stuff? <laughs> Doesn't everybody know John 3.16? And the way he preached it from a missionary's heart perspective, mm -hmm. dealing with folks in Africa, you're like, what an idiot I am mm -hmm. for thinking that. In other words, the point being is that Jesus Christ has preached. Can I rejoice that his name is exalted and it's brought across with some, some passion, some love? Mm -hmm. Paul said, you know what? Yeah, some guys are out there. No, they're, they're just doing it for their own flesh. They're doing it to align their pocketbook and their mm -hmm. wallet. But I just rejoice. I'm so happy in Christ. I can rejoice that his name is preached. Look with me over to uh, Luke chapter number 9. Luke chapter number 9. Got to get Kenny before I lose him, man. Actually, uh, Luke chapter number 9. You didn't get my nap. You didn't get your nap? Well, you'll get one in a half you read this and you go. Ah. <laughs> we can let you go, man. Luke 9. Luke, Luke 9. Uh, a couple verses, Kenny. 49 and 50, please. John answered and said, Master, we saw one casting out devils in thy name, and we forbade him, because he followeth not with us. And Jesus said unto him, Forbid him not, for he that is not against us is for us. That's a rough verse, man, isn't it? Wow. Yeah. They're not our strike, brother. Speaking of striker, <laughs> they're, <laughs> they're not our strike, brother. I'm like, yeah, mm. but they're trying to do something for Jesus Christ out there, and they actually mean it. Mm. And they're probably more sincere with their ESV than I am with my KJV. Mm. Probably got a better prayer life, too, and more more worshipful towards their Savior. And they don't have the right book. That's because nobody ever taught them. We have the right book. We have the right doctrine. We do. And yet, sometimes I fall short. I get cold, man. And then, you you know, you, you have trouble rejoicing when somebody leads somebody to Christ and they're not of, well, you know, they get saved in, in a, one of those community Jacob's Well weirdo places. But, you know, God takes his word gets the gospel across, and God's spirit deals with that person, and they get saved, and you're like, yeah, they're probably not really saved. They were in a wrong church. I don't know, man. Can you just praise God that Christ has preached? Yeah. And that somebody got saved? Right. Yeah. That, man, that, you said that, I, that's, it's borderline jealousy and envy. you got to be really careful yes. about that. Yeah. Uh, is it about him, or is it about you? I think it's, uh, if I remember correctly, and probably won't remember correctly, and I'll get home, and it'll be like, no, you were wrong again. But I believe uh, Brother Bobby Utley, he's in his 90s, his, uh, his wife is well under her 90s, mm -hmm. and he's a preacher down in, uh, I didn't, never even knew there was a place called, this is called Kannapolis, North Carolina. That's a place, isn't it? I'm like, is that a Navy depot, but it's actually in the woods because they're from <laughs> North Carolina? You know, like Annapolis, but it's Kannapolis, he's been down there forever, and he, up on the pulpit, it's like wood burned in. It's not about you. Mm -hmm. That's good. And then you put your Bible down, and then you got to preach. Look at that right there. Kenny's roll. What? <laughs> Benny, you a holy roller? What's going on here? Man? He dropped it. <laughs> he dropped it. Oh, no, 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 no. Don't do that around Brother Kim. He goes, this is a church. Mark, <laughs> Mark, Mark chapter number nine. Mark chapter number nine. <laughs> I was going to hope you're going to whip stuff at me like Paul at Lister, and I'd be going out, man, for the KO, and I wouldn't get up, man. David against Goliath. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. He slings it. He slings it at me. That'd be sweet. <laughs> then he stands on top of me with Paul's knife and takes my head off. <laughs> Finally kill that mean old giant. <laughs> He's over there repenting now. <laughs> Mark chapter number 9. Uh, Paul, again, verses 38 through 40, please. The companion to it. John answered him, saying, Master, we saw him casting out devils in thy name, and he followeth not us. And we forbade him, because he followeth not us. But Jesus said, Forbid him not, for there is no man which shall do a miracle in my name that can lightly speak evil of me. For he that is not against us is on our part. That's your companion to Luke chapter number 9, 49 and 50. Uh, if you're not against the Lord Jesus Christ, but you're for him, but it might not be exactly the way you would do it. Uh, there are, uh, you know, over the, the gifts of the Spirit of God, there's many administrations. 
I don't know how every church does it. Mm -hmm. Some churches, you know, they might preach first and sing after. I don't know. Some churches have offering and all that. And I don't, I've just, I've never been of that ilk. I think you get in there, get in the book. That's just me. Yeah. That's me personally. A lot of folks are not like that. And they want to have, you know, what I call filler time. But it's not my call if I'm there. I mean, but can God work through that? I believe so, but just because I don't, point being is that if Christ is preached, then he's preached through the word of God, then you got to say, you know what, at least Jesus Christ is preached. Paul's focus is, you know what, I don't care if I'm in prison, I don't care if I'm free, I don't care if you guys are out there preaching Jesus Christ and you're insincere because you're doing it. I'm just so happy I'm not going to hell that I get to hear his name preached. And the name that I was tracking Christians down by and killing by, I'm now in their family by him. All I can do is rejoice and, and say, wow, thank God for it. Mm -hmm. That's that's a man, that's a that's a rough lesson, boy, right there. Go over to uh Jeremiah 20. Go a little backwards here, Jeremiah 20. Mess everybody up. Jeremiah chapter 20. It's all about him, it's not about you. Mm -hmm. That's, that's a hard thing in the self-centered society in particular the last five years this, this in our in our country has become even even more so I still don't understand TikTok yeah I don't understand snapping photos of yourself mm -hmm. I'm embarrassed I'm, I'm serious yeah. I'm like I don't even like, I'm like Amish like that. I don't even like seeing my face. You know, when Ken gets me out there and I got the scrunchy face. <laughs> like I'm like looking at it going, oof, man. Mm -hmm. Couldn't you get a good side of me? There is no good side of me. How's that, man? <laughs> but I'm just saying, I'm like, people just want, you know what? They just want to be recognized for, look at me. You heard it in Sunday school this morning. What, that's, the, that's the Lucifer complex. Yes. It's I. Yep. It's, it's all about me. And Paul's like, eh, this is not about me. This is about Jesus Christ. Yeah. And he has to be the center and the focus of the church, of your life, and the whole night, so everything else from there can work properly. You've always got that foundation to go back to. Look at the Bible says how Jeremiah dealt with this in chapter 20. Mo, can you get to 7 through 9, please? <laughs> The Lord, thou hast deceived me, and I was deceived. Thou art stronger than I, and hast prevailed. I am in derision daily, everyone mocketh me. For since I spake, I cried out, I cried violence and spoil, because the word of the Lord was made a reproach unto me, and a derision daily. Then I said, I will not make mention of him, nor speak any more in his name. <laughs> but his word was in my heart as a burning fire mm -hmm. shut up in my bones, and I was weary with forbearing, and I could not stay. I can't deal with this anymore. They don't listen to me. They don't hear me. They don't care about me. If they're going to throw me in a pit, man, down in this sewer hole, and then after some guy get uh, cl uh, clouts of cloth <laughs> to pull me up underneath my armpits and pull me up out of the out of the miry clay, and I'm just I'm not preaching anymore. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna. It's not about you, Jeremiah. It's about him. And if there was anybody that sacrificed that didn't see anything, it was him. But then look what happens after Judah gets right and northern Israel gets right and you have the temple rebuilt in Ezra and you have the wall rebuilt in Nehemiah and here we go off to the races again. If you understand that, man, I, I can't keep quiet about this. Well, no, Lord, nobody's listened to me on the street. Mm -hmm. We've gone out for years and seen very little fruit, Lord, and we've sent 105,000 gospel tracts and what, what, what's that really done? You can think like that. You can get really downtrodden unless you get to the point and realize that it's about him, not about you. Right. And if he told you to send out 10 million tracks and you never saw a soul saved, would you do it? Mm. If you gave all your money to the missionaries and you heard that, boy, nobody ever got saved, would you still consider it worth it because he told you to do it? You say, well, that, that's not really... That's real life. Because we're very... We're very tangible oriented, even though we say we walk by faith, live by faith and all that, and we don't walk by sight, blah, 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 blah. No, I want to see, and I'm laboring for fruit, but I don't know if I'll see it in my lifetime. Mm -hmm. Who knows, I've seen some folks saved, led a bunch of folks to Christ, disciples and folks, but realistically, in the grand scheme, how many tracks I've handed out over the years, probably just a blip on the radar. But why are you doing that, Dave? So you can brag that you've got some notches on your spiritual gun belt? Mm -hmm. 
but you do it because you wanted to see him exalted. Right. And that's some rubber meets the road Christianity right there. But why do you have a church? Well, because I always want to be a pastor and I want to be the head guy and I want to answer anybody. If you think you don't answer anybody when you're a preacher, you're an idiot. Right. I'm going to run my own business because I want to be I want to be my own boss. Yeah. Ring, 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 ring. Need my leaves picked up. Ring, 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 ring. Need it. Right. And it's even worse when you're a quote unquote got your own business. Right. Everybody's your boss. Mm -hmm. So are you doing it because you love Jesus Christ and love the work of the ministry? Or are you doing it because it's self driven? Jeremiah's like, man, I, I can't believe this. I'm in derision. I can't stand this. I don't want to do it anymore. I'm done preaching. I'm done. I can't take the reactions. I can't take the way they hate me. But it's burning inside me. I got to keep going. What did God say people would have that? Now, don't you remember the guys over Luke 24? Did not our heart burn? That's a great companion verse for that. Did not our heart burn while we walked with him by the way and he opened the scriptures to us? They got a good case of heartburn, and I bet you it stuck with them for the rest of their lives on this earth. Go with me to uh, Acts chapter number 28. Acts 28. Let's go across the aisle of Jonathan here. Acts 28. Jonathan, can't take it easy on you. I am not going to do that. Oh. 17 through 31, please. And it came to pass after three days, Paul called the chief of the Jews together. And when they were come together, he said unto them, Men and brethren, though I have committed nothing against the people or customs of our fathers, yet it was delivered, yet I was delivered prisoner from Jerusalem into the hands of the Romans. Who, when they had examined me, would have let me go because there was no repentance. <coughs> but when the Jews spake against it, I was constrained to appeal unto Caesar, not that I had ought to accuse my nation of. For this cause thereof, for this cause therefore, have I called on you to see you and to speak with you, because that for the hope of Israel I am bound with this chain. And they and they said unto him, We neither received letters out of Judea concerning thee, neither any of the brethren that came. That came showed or spake any harm of thee, but we desire to hear of thee what thou thinkest. For as concerning this sect, we know that everywhere that everywhere it is spoken against. Mm -hmm. And when they had appointed him a day, there came many un, many to him un, into his lodging, to whom he expounded and testified the kingdom of God, persuading them concerning Jesus, both out of the law of Moses and out of the prophets, from morning till evening. And some believed the things which were spoken, and some believed not. And when they agreed up not among themselves, they departed, after that Paul had spoken one word. Well spake the Holy Ghost by this prophet unto our fathers. Say, go unto this people, and say, Hearing ye shall hear, and shall not understand. And seeing ye shall see, and not perceive. For the heart of this people is wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes have they closed lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and should be converted and I should heal them. Be it known therefore unto you that the salvation of God is sent unto the Gentiles and that they will hear it. And when he had said these words, the Jews departed and had great reasoning among themselves. And Paul dwelt two whole years in his, in his own hired house mm -hmm. and received all that came in unto him, preaching the kingdom of God and teaching those things which concerning the Lord Jesus Christ, with all confidence, no man forbidding him. I had to read that whole thing to get the context of what's going on there. Paul's near the end of his life. He's he's it's he's Rome. He's going to die. This is it. He's going to get beheaded for his Savior. And he gives you this whole last narrative the Spirit of God does through Paul. And to me, it's always shocked me that he preaches to the Jews knowing what Isaiah said. That hearing they won't hear and they won't understand and they won't be converted but he was he went and preached anyway because that's what God told him to do mm -hmm. knowing that he was going to be fighting an uphill battle and that these folks were going to be like get out of here man oh a few of them might get saved and all that but the reality is the bulk of them were not going to and the bulk of them were going to withstand him you read all throughout the book of Acts who withstood Paul the most his own kinsmen. The Jews were always against him preaching the gospel whenever he went into a town. And what's usually the first place he went to? 
a synagogue <laughs> on the Sabbath. You know why? Because he always had a heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel that he might be safe. He never lost his love for his brethren, his kinsmen according to the flesh. Yeah. God told him, and he quotes Isaiah, that these people are not going to do what they hear. And they're going to hear and not be converted. And the Gentiles will. And Paul said, you know why? Because he fashioned his heart a long time ago. It's not about me. It's about Jesus Christ. Yeah. And while I be obedient to what he told me, whether I get the results or not. That's hard, boy. What happens if the church goes down to two people? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Karen wouldn't be wanting to speak. Just, <laughs> just, be, just be me and Haley sitting here staring at each other. <laughs> I mean, honestly. Uh, what, I mean, I know Brother Herb's gone through some stuff, man. You, you, you're going to keep going until God says not to, or are you going to keep at it? Right. Mm -hmm. you, you have no, all this, this church, this church, you know, the church, Jacksonville, all those churches always have two, three hundred 300 people. What happens if God removes that man and takes home the glory? Right. And folks were going there because of that man. Right. And the attendance goes down. And they got a building. And they, they ministries. Mm -hmm. You going to keep preaching? It's hard, man. I don't, I don't honestly, uh, I've really never faulted anybody. When you get to the point where you see quote unquote results not happening, you kind of get bummed out. You do get bummed out. Mm -hmm. I, I got bummed out before quote unquote being a, in the pastorate. I'm like, why don't you want to serve Jesus Christ, man? Mm -hmm. Has he done great things for you? But the bottom line is, Dave, will you go do it regardless of anybody joins you? Will you go on the street by yourself when nobody joins you? Will you go preach my word in jails when nobody shows up? Will you go do what I've told you because you want to see Christ preached? That's the rubber meets the road type of Christianity you want to have. Do I want to, am I witnessing to be seen of men or to exalt Jesus Christ? It's a rough thing to ask. I mean, Paul says, you know what? Well, have these eyes said, why are you even preaching that? burning in me and I know what he did for me and I'm going to go preach to him man because I, you know what that's what the Lord told me to do yeah, yeah but you know you're quoting Isaiah or they're not going to hear be converted or any of that yeah but you know what we're just going to keep preaching man keep going we're not talking about mindlessly beating your head against the, the floor expecting results when God shut it down we're talking about staying the course through rough times mm -hmm. I mean whether Christ is preached with contention not sincerely or whether he's preached and everybody loves him are you just going to preach him and are you going to rejoice that he's preached it's a, bit, it's, it's, a, it's a huge thing that has to do with the heart of the saved person. Go to Philippians chapter 1, please. Philippians chapter 1, moving on to verse number 19. Philippians 1, 19. We should have probably kept the marker there. Philippians 1, 19. For I know that now he's saying what he just said about the bonds and all those things he's going through. He says in verse number 19, For I know that this shall turn to my salvation through your prayer and the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, according to my earnest expectation and my hope, that in nothing I shall be ashamed, that with all boldness as always, so now also Christ shall be magnified in my body, whether it be by life or by death. Verse 21, famous verse. If you'd like to quote it, uh, don't really want to see it happen until it's time. <laughs> For to me, to live is Christ, to die is gain. Just a quick reminder. What's the worst thing that can happen to you? You go on to glory. Paul's like, yeah, I mean, for me to live is Christ, to die is gain. I, I mean, whether I live in this body, it's his. If he beats this body, it's his. Whether it gets fed, it's his. Whether it doesn't get fed, whether the stars get thrown in jail, you know what? It, it belongs to him. And you know what? The worst thing that can happen to me is I get the greatest gain of all. I get to go home to heaven. What happens is you do get entranced by the world. Every one of us, every one of us has worldly uh, intentions and affections. I don't know what those are, but we all do. Yeah. And when you read something like this, when we sing songs about heaven, we get excited, and we should. But then that gets tempered really quickly with life. And you have to live life and pay bills and do all those things. But the heavenly mind and knowing that, man... <clears throat> I cannot wait to go home to glory. Yeah. That has to be reality for a child of God. You know, you know when I usually want to go home to heaven? When I'm puking on Wednesday night and I can't be in church. <laughs> yeah. When I'm sick as a dog, when things aren't going well, I'm like, it would just be great to go home to heaven right now. And the Lord's like, how about when you're on the mountaintop? Would that be good for you to go home now? 
when you're cresting the wave and things are great? Or is it just you want to go home to glory when things are quote unquote bad for you? Yeah. Right. That's a challenge, man. Paul says, you know what, for, to me to live is Christ, to die is gain. The worst thing that can happen to me, whether I exceed or diminish, the worst thing that happens is I go home to heaven. And you know what? I'm okay with it and either going home to heaven in either state from a palace or from a jail cell. I'm happy with it. Go with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. A couple of reminder verses now. And we are going home to glory one day. Well, I know these. Well, they have to settle down in your heart, brother, sister. They have to be real to you in your heart. Jennifer, uh, well, why did I have all this? Ooh, man. I have way, way too much for you to handle tonight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> cool. <coughs> Why don't you go 50 through 50? Man, I have a lot here. You know what? No, you know what? You know what? I am going to give you the full amount of time. <laughs> Let's go 42 to 58. Because what, what did he say over there? He's talking about his body, giving his body. Yep. And that, okay, they, now, all kidding aside, uh, you know, you remember, you know, if you lifted weights, what's the old saying? No, no, okay, no, pain. no pain, no gain. How about no pain, no pain? <laughs> I mean, no, no pain, no pain, man. I mean, I get it from a lifting perspective, and you want to push yourself and all that stuff, but, you know, when you tear a pec or you, you know, rip a bicep off the bone, you're like, <gasps> and you can't move. I mean, that's, you know, that's like no brain, lots of pain, stupid. Yeah. But it has to do with the body, and how, how do you read these books, Fox's Book of Martyrs and Martyr's Mirror, and how do you, how do you read all the modern-day uh, martyrs and what they're going through in the Middle East and over in China and all that stuff. How do you read that and how do those people deal with that? Mm -hmm. Because, like I said before, you know, pain, pain's not, pain's not fun, man. Yeah. Honestly, you get burnt or get sliced or whatever, it doesn't feel real good. Mm -hmm. um, Karen had a little bug bite thing on the arm the other day, and so I just happened to get up because I'm, I am a doctor, <laughs> and I got the wind, got the alcohol. And I snuck up on her with a paper towel and just put it around her. She's like, I'm like, I'm cleaning it. And then get the hydrogen peroxide out. And then with hazel and then bleach. And then it's done. And you'll never have an issue again. It'll burn your arm off, but you'll never have an itch there again. But you can tell the pain when that alcohol hits that open wound. You're like, whoa, man, that stings. So the body is very receptive to pain. Paul's at a certain point where he's like, you want to burn me? Burn me. Yeah. You want to pull me apart? Pull me apart. You know what? I can imagine him on the gallows when he's not going to be hanged, but up where they're going to execute him and cut his head off. That's apparently what history says happened to the Apostle Paul. Can you imagine him up on, can you imagine the Apostle Paul knowing what you know about him? Can you imagine him up on there with his head being put into the little, the little cradle area? Right. And the guy with the hood over, you know, his face. What do you think the Apostle Paul is doing? He's probably witnessing the guy. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's like, hey man, I'm out of here. You drop that ax, I'm out of here. I'm going home to glory, but man, you don't want to die and go to hell because yeah. you're still left behind here. You know what, before you go, you know, why don't you take a knee? You know you're a sinner, right? For all sin, I'm sure the glory guy just wrote that in the book of Romans. I, just got, the <laughs> I, got, a, I got a gospel track from that church, man. Let's go through this whole thing. But can you imagine the Apostle Paul, knowing what you know about him, mm -hmm. It doesn't seem, this is why I hate him, it doesn't seem like he ever has a down moment. He's like, okay, we'll chop my head off. What's the big deal? The minute you chop my head off, I'll finally see the one who died for me. Wow. No, I, did, I did see him. I understand I saw him on the road, but that was just for dramatic. You can kind of say, oh, wow. So I mean, you see him on the road. That's what you're going to see. You're like, oh, well, that's a really good preacher right there. I'm like, yeah, they saw him on the road. He saw him on the road. <laughs> but no, he's actually going to get to see his Savior again in glory. Right. That, that's the mindset of, of a saved person, or should be the saved, mm -hmm. the mindset of a saved person. The body's not like that. But what's today, if I ask you what the three parts of a body, of, a, of our makeup is, usually what is said in most churches? Body, body first. To it. Have you ever wondered why that is? Oh yeah, oh yeah. King James Bible says what? Spirit. 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 Who said Spirit. soul first? Oh, I did. Did, did someone say soul said first? Soul, yeah. Spirit. <laughs> Another notch. Yes, <laughs> 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 you're playing ticket. 
<laughs> Your pay ticket's been revoked. <laughs> they don't like tell Dr. Peacock about that one. <laughs> I've already given them a few little things you've done this year. <laughs> You're not getting any treats down there this year. <laughs> But I mean, what, typically when you're in a church, and I've heard this for, for, for decades, and you guys have too, when you say, oh, we're, we're body, soul, spirit, you know why we do that? Because that's the thing we love and put first. Yep. Oh, yeah. It's like, a, it's like some sort of weird spiritual subconscious thing where, oh, yeah, we're body, soul, spirit. I'm like, no, we're spirit, soul, soul body. The flesh comes. Last. Mm -hmm. Paul got that. Why do you think you're right? First Thessalonians five twenty three, yeah. because his body didn't mean anything to him. I don't. I know how to base. I know how to mount. Can, can, honestly, can we, can we go home today? You say. You say. Well, well, we talked about Lister last week and him going back in there. Timothy being one of the the fruit of his his labor of going back after he got rocked in the grave in uh, Acts fourteen. I think after you read that, Dr. Rucker made a comment. He goes, I think Paul was a suicidal maniac after that. You start reading some of the stuff after he saw this third heaven. He's like, yeah, can, can I get torn by beast at Ephesus? Can I, can, is there any way I can get a running train down the tracks? Can I jump in front of that? He's like, I want to get out of here, man. In other words, he, he was truly so heavenly minded. Yeah. He was no earthly good, but he was earthly good. Yeah. Look at the Bible says over in uh, 1 Corinthians. Jennifer, please. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption, it is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor, it is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, it is raised in power. It is sown a natural body, it is raised a spiritual body. Mm -hmm. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. Howbeit that was not howbeit that was not first which is spiritual, but that which is natural, and afterward that which is spiritual. The first man is of earth, earthy. The second man is the Lord from heaven. Isn't that great? The first man is of the earth. Yeah. Brother Bird, just say earthy. Well, what else would it be? Oh, the harp yeah. the harpers <laughs> harping their harps. I mean, come on. <laughs> Don't they know? Doesn't he know what he's talking about? <laughs> yeah, the first man is of the earth, earth. That's a great term. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sorry, go ahead. As is the earthy, such are they that are earthy. As <laughs> <laughs> is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. Huh. And as they have borne the image of the earthy, so we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. He's not going to let you out of the maze. <laughs> <laughs> no. the, earth, the earthy and heavenly is going to take you in the maze, man. Keep on going. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trump trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Amen. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. Yes. Right. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? Amen. The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth, giveth us the victory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ. So very quickly before you finish the last verse, what would the victory be after reading all those verses? Death. The victory over what? Death, great. And this corruption. Mm -hmm. Now how could you write that, speak it by the Holy Ghost, the Holy Man of God speak? How, how could you pen that down for centuries of save readers and not believe that in your life mm. that's the apostle paul i'm getting a glorified body one day this corruptible this corruption is putting on incorruptible right. this mortal is going to be swallowed up of immortality that's the victory i have in christ that my pharisaical background could never give me go ahead please Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. So whether he, he takes me home to glory or lets me labor for some more years, it doesn't matter. It all, honestly, it all ends well for me in Christ Jesus. Whew, man. If, if the lost 
if the lost world could only see that. But the natural man receives not the things of the Spirit of God, for the foolishness unto them. Right. God has to deal them through the Word of God and the Spirit of God, drawing them as the sun is lifted up and you show them their need for Christ. If they could just see what saved people really have. But I, I do fault us, I fault myself, because we live lives that aren't resurrected lives. Yeah. We don't live like our life doesn't mean anything to us. We live like our life down here is everything. Right. And there's no abandonment of the carnality. It's, yeah, I, 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 this, is, this is just me speaking. Nobody else, no, have anybody in mind in the room whatsoever. This is, I want to have, I want to have a comfortable, cushy life, but serve Jesus. Mm-hmm. I know that's real for the discussions we've had with Brother Burr. Yeah. Let's let us let us just be brutally honest about it. Yep. Fat, lazy American Christianity is a joke mm. to ninety five percent of the world that's saved nice. out in any other country. But you get infected by that. Where, man, I, I want to I want to protect my life. I want to protect my lifestyle. And I want to have a little bit of Jesus. And then Josiah says, you know what? We're going to build a temple back up and fix the house of the Lord. And we got money pouring in, but I heard that book and I just ripped my clothes off and said, woe is me. I am, I am, I'm, I'm horrible. And the Lord says, I'm going to wipe everybody out, Josiah, as we saw this morning, but I'm going to keep you alive because you rent, you rent your garments, but it was your heart. Amen. Yeah. And I meant more to you than the money or the house that they were fixing for me. And I want I want to have just enough Jesus to keep, you know, keep me kind of in his good graces. But I want to I want to still have a comfortable life and to truly serve him and to have the attitude Paul said. It's got to be Lord whatever you want to do with me. Yeah. You know what? Uh, you can have it. You can have it all. You get whatever the all I have is, I have it because of you, but you can have it all. And wherever you put me, you can put me. Wherever you want to put me, you can have at it. Whatever you want to do with me, you can have at it. You want to take my kids, they're your kids anyway. Take my wife, she was, that's the wife she gave me. Now we're getting, now, I, I'd like to live like the Apostle Paul. <laughs> no, you wouldn't. <laughs> that, just, that's just, that just sounds so great when we say it, but the reality is, no, I cling to my life way too much, man. Yeah. And he goes, I don't care for my body. <laughs> Do whatever you want to do. For me to live as Christ and die as gain, whatever they do, I don't, I don't care. Because I'm going home to glory one day. And I'd rather go home to glory, first class, serving my Lord and touch down at New Jerusalem Airport, than coming and crashing, burning, living the most carnal, locked lifestyle that I could. It's, it's horrible. It's a reminder for me personally that, you know what? The Lord just wants to see if you're willing to give, quote unquote, your life, which it's not, back to Him. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, please. Just some, it's, it's, yeah, I mean, you go through Philippians, and I, again, where is, where is the primary focus when He's in Philippi? He's dealing with evil spirits with Lydia, and they locked up in jail. And the Spirit of God is the one that told him to go there. Uh, we want to go over to Phrygia and uh, Pamphylia. We go and, 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 and the Spirit of God says, you're not going there. You're going to Macedonia. But, uh, I mean, uh, aren't there lost people in Phrygia and Pamphylia? You are going to Macedonia. Do you want to go where I want you to go? Or do you want to go where you want to go and make a wreck of it? Well, okay, I'll, I'll obey you. You bought me, you owe me. And they went to Macedonia and Lydia, spirit of divination, but Lydia's family is happy he went. The jailer and his family are happy he went. Mm -hmm. I just I don't see that because I have a very short, earthly, carnal mentality too much of the time. Second Corinthians chapter five, one through nine, Deb, if you could please. For we know that if our earthly house is of this tabernacle, we're dissolved and have a building of God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. 
For in this we grow, earnestly desire to be clothed upon with our house which is from heaven. If so be that if so be that being clothed we shall not be found naked. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened, not for what we would be unclothed, but clothed upon, that mortality might be swallowed up of life. Now he that hath brought us for the selfsame thing is God, who also hath given unto us the earnest of the Spirit. Amen. Therefore we always we are always confident, knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Mm -hmm. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body than to be present with the Lord. Mm -hmm. Wherefore we labor that whether absent or present or absent, we may be accepted of him. Thank you. Romans chapter number eight. We're getting clothed upon one day with our house from heaven. Mm -hmm. That's gonna be wild. I still can't quite I can't grasp that. And I know all the movies try to make the best they can of this biblical transaction when one day we'll get a glorified body. I mean, that's your Superman. That's all your crazy superheroes and all that stuff. And I understand the sons of God makes them the daughters of man. I, you get the offspring and all. I, I get all that. But they're trying to they're trying to make these you know disease free utopic creatures and places and you'll just live and go on and on and things are wonderful and it's a perfect society and all that. Uh, how about you get saved the Bible way and one day you'll have a glorified body that can go through the atmosphere and up to any heaven, any galaxy you want without any oxygen or space suit or rocket or anything. Mm -hmm. And you'll actually be able to finally think purely and cleanly 100% yeah. of the time forever. I, that's going to be, I, I just can't even, I mean, every thought you have will be exactly what God wants you to have for the right. You'll, you'll never have the wrong thought. Yeah. <laughs> Who would like to have that now, man? <laughs> I'm thinking about the Muppets, Looney Tunes, all kinds of, what can I do with this chainsaw? All kind. Of, I mean, nothing bad necessarily, even though Halloween's coming. <laughs> just take the chain off. Trump or treat on Wednesday night, can't you want Just take, take the yeah. chain off. Yeah, what's that? Take the chain off. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> no. Or the, not. Uh, or not. No, or not. Yeah. So here's the trunk or treat. I'm going to put you in a trunk. <laughs> I'm going to seal it and put it in the harbor. And that's going to be my treat to see if you can get out. <laughs> but anyway, I mean, just one day you're going to, you're going to, you're going to have this, man. You're going, to be, you're going to be clothed upon with your house from heaven. Mm -hmm. And you're honestly, you're never going to have a pain again. No hip replacements, man. No backs, no knees, no... <laughs> Seriously, no no migraines today. Except mm -hmm. when you come to visit me in my house. <laughs> <laughs> that might be the only time you have a migraine in New Jerusalem. But we don't, you know why we don't think like that? This man thought like that. He's trying to exhort the Philippians while he's in a jail cell and dealing with the spirit of divination down by the riverbank and dealing with all this other craziness. He's trying to encourage these Philippian believers to say, you know what? The worst it can get for us is we're going home to heaven. Yeah. Serve him while you can while he gives you time to serve him because you know what? There really is a better day coming. Mm -hmm. It's on the other side up in glory. And that all the pain is going to be gone one day and all the tears will be wiped away. And honestly, we'll get to be with God forever. I know he dwells inside. I understand that. But actually to be there in the new Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. I think some crazy stuff, man. What happens if the Lord just cracks open the book of like Habakkuk. And he goes through it like I would go through like every verse, but he goes through like every verse that lines up with it. You'd be like, man, this is not taking forever because I have a glorified body. You're wishing you had a glorified body right now at six o'clock. <laughs> like, but imagine, I mean, I think some crazy I mean, what if he just sits down and says, you know what? Why don't, why don't you why don't you give me your testimony of the day I saved you? You remember that, don't you? He just goes all throughout the third up New Jersey and says, and has everybody give their testimony. I just think some crazy stuff. For all eternity, what are you going to be doing, man? I mean, besides harping on your harping with your harping. With your harping. Bert, you're going you're to have a harping. You're going to be playing that harp, man. Just, yeah. But you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna have a glorified body, man. And everything you say is going to be exactly right. You never say it with any bitterness, yeah. any wrath, any anger. There'll be no shade to it. Man. Yeah. Paul's like, 
Yeah, for me to live is Christ. <sighs> to die is gain. Man. I, and I don't really care what happens to me. He can use this body up because he bought it. He owns it. He can put me through whatever he wants to put me through because I think I've done some things against his body. Mm -hmm. It's the least I can do. Mm -hmm. That's what he was doing before, was he not? Right. Yeah. Hailing men and women. Yep. Staying there holding the clothes of the guys so they can go pick some rocks up to kill Stephen. And they laid their clothes down at a young man's feet. His name was Saul. He's walking, he's, he's cheering it on. Kill that, kill that Christian, kill that preacher. Kill that, kill that stupid follower of Christ. And then, ah, have I got a trick for you in a couple chapters? <laughs> yeah, and you know what's interesting about that? You read Paul's preaching in Acts 13, it's almost word for word that Stephen preached. Mm -hmm. He starts from Abraham all the way down. Paul, if you'd like, came, I know what you can get that. <laughs> yeah. I thought we were done with Pepper X this morning. No? Okay, no, go. <laughs> Just mess with him, man. But you think about that, man. Paul, Paul can say this stuff. You say, well, that's because he's the Apostle Paul. And who are you? Uh, he's an Apostle. Yes, that's different. I understand that. But he's got as much Holy Ghost as you and I do. Mm. You can get more of it. Mm. Romans chapter 8. Got a couple more. Uh, 18 through 25, please, if you could. Romans 8, 18 through 25. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who has subjected the same in hope. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. Yeah. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our body. For we are saved by hope, but hope that is not, but hope that is seen is not mm -hmm. hope. For what a man seeth, why do they yet hope for? But if we hope for that we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. Amen. Uh, very quick side note, verse 24. That's a great verse to prove that millennial salvation is not the same as church age salvation. Amen. You're saved by what? Grace through faith. Hope. What's he say hope is? Not seen. Hope that is seen is not hope. All right. Who's going to be on the throne in Jerusalem? Yeah. Who's going to be on the 12 thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel? You'll have several million replicas of Jesus Christ in the church age. You'll have tribulation saints ruling and reigning. There is no salvation by hope. Uh, faith is the... Faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Yes, no? Am I in the neighborhood? Yeah. You got it. Haley's going to give me like, she's giving me the hair. The, you know, she's giving me, she she me like the... That's the <laughs> what happened? She said it correctly. She said she said it. You, you were like blood. staring at me like I said it wrong. Uh, and then we you were okay, maybe I heard it wrong. <laughs> maybe I'm reverting back to 15-year-old Haley where everything was wrong. Sorry. Right. No, that's not true. Second to the chapter four. <laughs> You know why I've been sick and cursed? Haley's prayers. Let's just cover it to the chase. Oh, she got a little voodoo doll of me. <laughs> Second Timothy chapter four. I have no need to blame but myself. <laughs> They're my offspring. <laughs> well, Karen was there too. I'm just saying that they, <laughs> one of them tends to gravitate towards me, unfortunately. It's Taylor. It's actually Taylor. Right. Yeah. 60. <laughs> Six. <laughs> oh, there you go. Six through, six through eight, Taylor. Second Timothy 4. For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight, I have finished my course, I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, 
And not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. I finished it. I'm, I'm going home to glory. I'm getting crowned today. Acts 20, last one. Acts 20, please. Just a couple of reminders about the worst thing that can happen to us if we go into glory. Paul was trying to get that across to the Philippian believers. They had to die as game. That was one of the arguments myself and Estiana would get into as a Catholic. Yeah. Um, when she was witnessing to me was she wasn't afraid to die. And I'm like, what are you talking about? You're not afraid to die. And you can't understand that. No, not as a lost person. You can't understand it. You can't because the hope of the resurrection is not in you. Yeah. Literally, what, what did the Apostle Paul say in Acts 28 when Jonathan read it? He goes, he said this term, for the hope of Israel, mm. I'm in these bonds. Well, that hope for Israel, I know, is the second coming. I understand all that. But it's our blessed hope. Mm -hmm. You're saved by hope. It's that I know, I know for sure. Yeah. that I'm going to glory when I die because of Jesus Christ saving my soul 40 years ago this year. Yeah. I know what he did for me personally. You know why I know it? Because he told me in his book, and he mm -hmm. can't lie. Mm -hmm. And I did what he told me to do. Mm -hmm. Repentance toward God, faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. Are you just arrogant and cocky about it? No, I'm not. I know in whom mm -hmm. I believe it, and yeah. am persuaded that he's, he's able, able to keep that which I committed unto him against that day. I guess that day I had to say <laughs> because I committed my soul to him mm. and he said done deal no problem got it You're, in fact let me put you up here with me right now to make sure you don't mess it up mm. ah. yeah see you have many places mm. crazy. you're just waiting for the redemption of the body yeah. or just read it yeah yeah. Ah. Crazy. Crazy. yeah but I'm going to keep living my life like I'm you know just, a, just a, an idiot. All right. Um, Haley, buddy, long lost friend. <laughs> Acts 20, verse 17. Did you actually say Hebrews 11, 1, right? Seriously? Yes. You did? Yes. You did. I heard so. Gave you such a look. <laughs> Was it the strikeout look? Was it the strikeout look? No. <laughs> I'm trying to keep, to keep that way. That's reserved for later. <laughs> But Jonathan said you quoted right, so if Jonathan said it, I believe it. It's so true. I quoted the last half at the well, same Well, that's why I got confused. Was I was like, the first half. <laughs> <laughs> I jumped so, to the evidence part, and then she was doing the whole Maybe thing. Maybe you meant the look for her. <laughs> 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 I, was like, I was getting confused. She was getting all this heat. I'm like, I should tell. I got <laughs> 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 All right, Haley, finish it up. Acts 20, 17 to 27, please, if you could. And from Miletus he sent to Ephesus and called the elders of the church. And when they were come to him, he said unto them, Ye know, from the first day that I came into Asia, after what manner I have been with you at all seasons, serving the Lord with all humility of mind yeah. and with many tears and temptations, which befell me by the lying in wait of the, of the Jews, and how I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you, but have showed you and have taught you publicly, and from house to house, Amen. testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks, repentance toward God and faith toward mm -hmm. our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And now, behold, I go bond in the spirit unto Jerusalem, and knowing the things that shall befall me there, <coughs> save that the Holy Ghost <coughs> witnesseth in every city, saying that bonds and afflictions abide me. Did you notice a little S versus Holy Ghost? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. But none of these things move me, neither count this. I my life dear unto myself. That's so Philippians. That, yep. So that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. Amen. And now behold, I know that ye all, among whom I have gone preaching the kingdom of God, shall see my face no more. Wherefore I take you to record this day that I am pure from the blood of all men. For I have not shown to declare unto you all the counsel of God. He says, I don't count my life dear. My life is not mine. It's hid with Christ in God. I gotta give Karen one because she's looking all lovely back there. <laughs> just just one, Karen. Seriously, 25 of Acts, and then we're gonna pray. Just to go along with the uh, 
I, I, I don't I, I, I don't count my life here. I really don't. That that's hard, man. That's hard to sell. It's easy to quote and easy to preach and all that, but realistically, mm -hmm. my claws are into my life and my comfort more than I would even like to acknowledge. Mm -hmm. I know because when something doesn't go my way, I turn into a baby. Stupid stuff, man. Taco Bell thing. <laughs> it had to come. It had to come. Oh, out. this happened to Karen. <laughs> Karen, I, I thought seven spears more wicked than herself. And that was my wife. I can my name David. <laughs> oh, the husband thou gave us me. So we go to Taco Bell. They're usually pretty good there. Seriously, they they are. And it was jammed up. As, and when it's jammed up, and it's taking time. I'm thinking, what? You grow the corn, chop the corn down. And then I just preached that message. Now I'm getting angry because they got to make them corn and put it down. <laughs> and the microwave's probably broken and everything. So Karen gets three hard taco regulars. She hates sour cream. I don't know why. Not scriptural. <laughs> and, and tomato. Well, Haley doesn't like tomatoes either. I don't, I don't get that either. But, uh, so mom gets home and she looks up and she goes, Ow! <laughs> I'm upstairs. I thought, I thought, honestly, I thought the chimney, I thought the chimney fell. <laughs> honestly, I thought, I thought the, I thought the boiler, I thought the boiler blew. I thought it was something serious. She goes, Ow! We <laughs> put sour cream on my top. I'm like, that's my life. <laughs> sour cream on your stupid taco and you lost your arm. I thought, I thought, I was like, what? <laughs> I was going to have to call the cops. <laughs> Seriously. They put sour cream on her taco. She lost her. That's good. She's like, do you want this? I'm like, yeah, of course. <laughs> two bites. Um, like, the, like, the, like the turtle and the owl and the lollipop. Um, um, two bites. <laughs> Snap it, fold it, chuck it. <laughs> Over. So, Car so Karen's starving right now? Uh, yes. She goes, they got one ramp of three. <laughs> oh. Murmuring Israel, man. Murmuring Israel. That's, <laughs> they look that's what I was saying. And they corrected themselves, but didn't yeah. correct the ones that they already got wrong. <laughs> this is going live through all the time. And they know they're going to mess up your Taco Bell from now on. Yeah. They're probably showing you a Taco Bell right now. Yeah. All right, go ahead. All right, Karen, one verse, and then seriously, we've got we to gotta get some Taco Bell play. <laughs> 2510, Karen. I mean, 2511 goes along with Paul over in 2024 about his not counting life dear. Look what he says when they when Festus of all people puts the puts the questioning to him. For if I be an offender or have committed anything worthy of death, I refuse not to die. Wow. But if there be none of these things whereof these accuse me, no man may deliver me unto them. I feel a deceiver. He said he's like, if you got me, you got me you got me, kill me. Take me out. Mm. If, if, if I've really broken your law for preaching Jesus Christ, I don't refuse to die. Kill me. Yeah. I'm thinking to myself, uh, can I get CLA on the line? Yeah. <laughs> Some stinking Christian lawyer. The other me told me to move from the street. Mm. Say people don't. I, I don't have this mentality, man, where yeah. you're dead. You're actually, your life means nothing to you. It's because it's Jesus Christ's life. Man, what a what a what a horrible <laughs> verses in Philippians. That was a cheerful book. There's a lot of joy in there. Rejoice evermore. Yeah, yeah. Well, you got to get through prison first to get to the, mm -hmm. the joy. So, yeah. Amen, brother Bert. Can you pray for us, please? Mm -hmm. Heavenly Father, thank you for your, your word. Thank you for the examples and examples you put in there for us. Amen. Well, thank you for the reminder of well, what real Christianity is. Yeah, and what it should be. Lord, I pray that we would not count our lives dear unto us. That I would not count my lives dear. We know in our head that we belong to you, and you rightfully own us, bought us with your blood. But we tend to hang on, and I definitely include myself in that. 
Thanks for all the blessings we do have. It does seem to be a natural result of human nature when it, when it leads to kind of get slack about those things. Yeah. Lord, help us to appreciate the things that you give us, but not but we, that, that we don't cling to them as a result. And just realize they're temporary things that you just gave to us because we're kind. Yeah. And Lord, I pray we would rather than cling to them, Lord, use them as a Use the freedoms and luxuries and blessings you have, you've given to us to better serve you. Yeah. And Lord helps to keep our affections and set our affections yeah. on things yeah. above, not on things of earth. Thank you for your long suffering and patience towards us, Lord. Thank you for your word. Yes. And thank you for loving us, even though we don't deserve it. In Jesus' name, amen. Yeah. Amen.